Hello, this is News Now, which you live from Ripon TV News Studio in Lagos, Nigeria. And first, the headlines. Abuja High Court issues arrest warrant against the Deputy Speaker of the Imo State House of Assembly. Taraba State Governor raises alarm over plots by Boko Haram and Islamic State West African Province to establish terrorist camps in the state. World Bank approves 700 million US dollars for new climate resilient projects in Nigeria. At least 2,500 people, including hundreds of the children, flee as fighting ensues between Myanmar army and ethnic minority rebels. Glad to have you join us and hear some stories making headlines at this hour. I am Margaret Opara. A High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, in Jabi, Abuja, has issued an arrest warrant against the Deputy Speaker of the Imo State House of Assembly, Amarachi China, in Wanyamu, over his alleged involvement in a 75 million naira fraud. Justice Charles Agbaza, in a ruling on Thursday, directed the commander of the Intelligence Response Team, IRT, of the Nigerian Police Force, NPF headquarters, Abuja, to execute the arrest warrant so issued. Justice Agbaza issued the order following Iwayamu's failure to appear in court to answer to the four-count charge filed against him by the Inspector General of Police. At the mention of the case yesterday, Iwayamu was absent in court, but his lawyer, Nabao Ominibo, apologized for his absence. Ominibo will claim that his clients were suffering from some health challenges, was unable to present any medical reports to support his claim where the judge requested for one. And meanwhile, the governor of Imo State, Hope Uzodimma, has signed into law violence against persons by Bishon VAPP bill. Hope Uzodimma, while assenting to the bill in government house Oweri, says contrary to rumors, the bill doesn't support abortion or same-sex marriage. He said the bill will help to reduce violence against both male and female as it bestows equal rights for both genders. The Violence Against Persons Prohibition Bill is all-encompassing as it tends to address the issues of men, women, the boy child, and the girl child. The law bestows equal rights on both the female and male as it regards seeking redress. Oftentimes, we hear about men assaulting their wives. But the truth is that there are cases where women batter their husbands. So if that happens, men can also open up and also seek redress as this law addresses that. Today also is the day that the governor has centered the VAPP. Um, so I'm so happy, I'm excited and I think now our uh, women, our girls, even our boys and our men will be so happy. I also pray for proper implementation of this law. And, um, and I hope and pray that um, from now onwards, things will be better for the girl child, the woman, and then our boys too, and our men. Thank you. This law <coughs> is very important because it brings about some very, very new, very jamming, very important dimensions in the laws of human states as it has to do with the violence against persons, especially women and girls and children. The bill is designed to tackle all forms of violence against persons in private and public life and provide maximum protection and effective remedies for victims and punishments for offenders. The leadership of the National Association of Nigerian Students, NAND Southwest, has passed a vote of no confidence on the Sunday at the Dayo as a phone led executive. The Southwest Zone of NAND also asked him to resign with immediate effects because his tenure has expired. 
Addressing the newsman in Akure on the state capital, four state chairman of NANS claimed as a force one year in office has dragged the name of the association into the mud due to his ineptitude. We are supposed to have a new fresh of executive as we speak, and we've actually put in you know, our demands via several means and via several platforms. But it seems the president or the so-called president is actually adamant on this. And he believes he has some power that be as such, he can do and undo. But we are letting him know at the level of the student wing, there is no power that supersedes the unism of students. Any other zones, for an example, the zone A and some other zones are also clamoring on this that we're doing today. So I believe we being here, we're representing the voice of every progressive minded student leader of the Southwest Zone. President of Nigeria, Mohamed Buhari, has officially approved the training to arm aviation security officers at airports across the country. The Managing Director of Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, Captain Rabiu Yududu, disclosed this to journalists in Abuja while speaking on the sidelines of an event organized by the Abuja Transport and Aviation Correspondents Association. Yadudu, who was represented by the Director of Human Resources and Administration, Norris Anozi, said the FAAN has been doing a lot of training for aviation security officers. Yadudu said travelers using the airport this year should not panic about their safety, adding that the federal government was working hard to ensure that the airports were free of doubt and other forms of insecurity. In more stories, the House of Representatives has called on the Inspector General of Police, Usman Al-Kali Baba, to deploy well-equipped policemen to tow a local government area of Bauta State to help stem the tide of insecurity in the state. The resolution of the lawmakers was sequel to the adoption of a motion sponsored by Honorable Muda Lawal Umar. Moving the notion, Umar noted that to a local government area with a landmass of 6,932,000 Kilometers is arguably the largest local government area in Nigeria. He lamented that despite its large landmass, only about 70 policemen with limited arms, ammunition, and operational tools have been charged with the responsibility of safeguarding the area. Umar warned that inadequate policemen are not deployed and properly equipped to repel attacks on the area. The place may become the next hotbed of insecurity in the nation. Taraba State Governor Dairos Ishaku had raised an alarm over plot by Boko Haram and Islamic State West African province Iswap to establish terrorist camps in his state. He threatened to dethrone any traditional ruler caught aiding or harboring criminals and asked them not to allow non indigents with negative mindset to settle in their domains. Governor Ishaku stated this on Thursday while signing the 149 billion Naira 2022 budget into the state of the state of Becky Pardon into law at the executive chamber of the government house in Jalingo. He insisted that the security of lives and property would be upheld firmly by his administration and no stone would be left untold in doing so. And our operatives of the Natural Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLA, on patrol have intercepted 34 children along the Okada local, local Jar Expressway in Kogi State. And the LA spokesman Femi Babafemi, who confirmed this in a statement on Friday, revealed that operatives also seized 64,000 pump action gun cartridges and a new pump action gun in Anambra. According to him, the children between the ages of 8 and 14 were being trafficked from Ijebode in Ogun State to the federal capital territory. He stated that the children were initially trafficked from Play 2 to Ijebode where they were distributed to different households as domestic servants. Mawa also ordered the transfer of the 34 trafficked children to the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIB, for necessary actions. And away from that, the Special Offences Court sitting in Kedger has granted bail to a former Minister of Aviation, Femi Fani Kayodi, in the sum of 5 million naira. Justice Olubumi Abike Fadipe granted the bail on Friday following an oral application made by the counsel to the former minister Wale Balogun. The bail conditions included that the defendant must fill an undertaking 
to attend all his trial dates and to present a shorty in like some who must be resident in the court's jurisdiction and should also feel an undertaking that the defendant would attend all hearings. Before the court heard the bail application, Justice Abike Fadipe first ruled an application by the former minister challenging the powers of the jurisdiction of the courts to try him on the charge of forgery and procurement of a fabricated medical report made against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. It dismissed the objections of the defense counsel and held that it had jurisdiction to try the case. This paved way for Fanny Kayode to be arraigned on all 12 counts of alleged forgery of medical reports to which he pleaded not guilty. And moving on, the World Bank has announced its approval of a sum of 700 million US dollars credit from East International Development Association, IDA, for the Nigerian agroclimatic resilience in semi arid landscape. Aquasal project. The project is expected to increase the implementation of sustainable landscape management practices in northern Nigeria and strengthen the country's long term enabling environment for integrated climate resilient landscape management. According to a statement from the multilateral institution, the productivity of major crops in Nigeria has been steadily declining over the past two decades in part due to climate change forcing an expansion of the area under agriculture and increased imports to meet the food needs of Nigeria's growing population. Still to come, death toll from Typhoon in Philippines rises to 12. The deals and more after the short break. Swift Dry Cleaners Limited Professional Dry Cleaners Best in dry cleaning and laundry services That meets the needs of our consumers yeah. Swift Dry Cleaners Limited Swift Dry Cleaners Limited Swift Dry Cleaners Limited yeah. Swift Dry Cleaners Limited yeah. For clean wash and quick delivery Swift dry cleaners to me Swift dry cleaners to me Swift dry cleaners to me For clean wash and quick delivery Swift dry cleaners Clean wash, quick delivery and now on the African scene, Egypt and Saudi Arabia are seeking ways to help Libya attain its stability as a North African country heads to a presidential election next week. In a joint news conference, Shoki and Farhan said it was important for the Libyan presidential elections to go ahead at scheduled. The election meant to help unify the nation after a decade of civil war. It's supposed to take place in just over a week, but calls are mounting for a delay. The vote scheduled for December 24 is to choose Libya's first president since the Oscar and killing of long-term dictator Muammar Gaddafi more than a decade ago. Now clashes between herders, fishermen and farmers in the far north of Cameroon have driven at least 100,000 people from their homes in the past two weeks, creating a humanitarian emergency. The United Nations Refugee Agency UNHCR said on Friday. The UNHCR estimated that more than 5,000 people had fled into neighboring Chad in recent days, while at least 15,000 people had been forced to seek shelter within Cameroon. 44 people have been killed in the fighting and 101 injured, thought much said. Chad is home to nearly a million refugees and internally displaced people. The vast majority of new arrivals into Chad were children, and 98% of the adults were women. Sotma said refugees are in dire need of shelter, blankets, mats, and hygienic kits. And now news from the foreign scene. The death toll from a typhoon that slammed into the Philippines rose to 12 on Friday, and its president feared it could climb as further authorities assesses the devastation caused by one of the strongest tropical storms to hit the country this year. President Rodrigo Duterte said he would visit battered central and southern areas on Saturday to see the extent of damage as the government tried to figure out how much it could raise from the disaster response. 
The president said COVID-19 spending had already depleted this year's budget. Jalat said the death toll was preliminary and he was awaiting information from provocation units before a complete damage assessment could be made. The flash floods in northern Iraq killed at least eight people on Friday, Iraqi Kurdish Authority said. Another three people were missing after heavy rain caused the floods in remote areas south of the city of Erbil, capital of Iraqi's autonomous Kurdistan region, the Kurdish civil defense first responders said. Flooding and intense storms often hit parts of Iraq during the winter, especially in the north, but are rare so deadly. Several people were killed and thousands fled their homes in flash floods in northern Iraqi in 2018. Meanwhile, at least 2,500 people, including hundreds of children, have fled a flare-up in fighting between the Myanmar army and ethnic minority rebels and have taken refuge across the border in Thailand, Thai authorities and aid groups said. Those displayed had poured into the Thai town of Mai Sort after fighting the past few days between the Karin National Union, KNU, and Myanmar's army. Myanmar was plunged into turmoil when the military offset the civilian government led by Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi on February 1, triggering protests in cities and parade clashes in the countryside between anti-junta militia and the army. Coming up next is business news. Hello and welcome to Business News. I am Mobilan Liadishui and these are the stories we're tracking at the moment. The World Bank has announced that it has approved $700 million from its International Development Association, IDA, for the Nigeria Agroclimatic Resilience in Semi-Arid Landscapes Project. The World Bank disclosed this in Washington in a statement that the scheme is expected to boost Nigeria's implementation of sustainable landscape management practices in northern Nigeria and strengthen the country's long-term enabling environment for integrated climate-resilient landscape management. It also added that due to low productivity of cash crops in Nigeria, the fund would be beneficial to deal with climatic issues, including water shortages in the north leading to desertification and habitat loss. The statement said, quote, resource shortages, violent conflict, outdated agricultural systems not adapted to changing dryland conditions, lack of access to finance, weak value chain linkages, an uncompetitive environment for agribusiness and poor market access are other key barriers to increased agricultural productivity in Nigeria. End of quote. The Nigerian government has announced that it has commenced the disbursement of 1,035 metric tons of wheat seed and impute to farmers in Kaduna, Katsina and Kano State. This was disclosed on Thursday by Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Dr. Mohamed Abubakar, inaugurating the project in Zaria. The minister disclosed that it was part of its effort to reduce production costs and boost food security. The minister stated that Kaduna State received 350 bags of 100 kg seeds, while Kano and Katsina State received bags of 100 kg seeds each. The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development also added that the said seed planters, moisture and pH meters would also be distributed to the farmers as well as growth enhancers, sprayers and organic products. State governors on Thursday declared that they would review the federal government's proposed privatization of 10 power generating plants under the National Integrated Power Project. Describing the 10 NIPP plants under the management of the Niger Delta Power Holding Company of Nigeria as critical national assets, the governors said they had resolved to assess the plans to privatize the facilities. State government owned 53% share of the National Integrated Power Project, NIPPS, 
while the federal government owns the remaining 47 percent. In a communique issued at the end of the 36th teleconference meeting of the Nigeria Governors Forum signed by the chairman, Governor Kayade Fayemi, the governor said the proposed NIPPS privatization would be reviewed. And South Korea has offered to help Nigeria develop nuclear energy options to address the shortage of power generation and supply in the country. The ambassador of South Korea to Nigeria, Kim Young-cho, disclosed this at an interactive session with the Senate Committee on Power, chaired by Senator Gabriel Suswam. According to him, the nuclear energy options currently being used in, in the United Arab Emirates are based on South Korea's model and powered by South Korean companies. The committee had called for the meeting to clarify certain issues regarding the standalone mini-grid project to be funded by the Korean government and gifted to Nigeria. The Minnesota Grid project is valued at $12.4 million. According to Cho, the project is a grant from his country to Nigeria and not alone. The envoy also confirmed that all the four mini grids would be sited in Abuja, with the works and maintenance of the projects to be handled by South Korean contractors. And Nigeria has submitted a draft resolution to the United Nations Convention Against Corruption on the Use of Beneficial Ownership Information and Data Disclosure to identify, track, recover and return assets looted or stolen from developing countries. Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami announced this while addressing the ninth session of Conference of State Parties in progress in Sham El Sheikh, Egypt. He explained that the draft resolution was submitted jointly with the support and partnership of five other developing countries, namely Kenya, Pakistan, Peru, and Saudi Arabia. A statement issued in Abuja by the Deputy Director, Head Communications and Advocacy, Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, Obiageli Onora, said Malami informed the UN Convention that Nigeria had put in place institutional structures and legislations to protect its resources. The minister conveyed Nigeria's appeal to the Conference of State Parties of the UN Convention Against Corruption to consider the draft resolution on its merit in view of its strategic importance in recovering looted assets from developing countries. And the House of Representatives has urged the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority and the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, FAN, to ensure that abandoned and non-functional aircraft are immediately removed from all airports across the country and impose heavy fines on the owners for non-compliance. In addition, the House mandated its Committee on Aviation to ensure compliance with the resolution and report back within three weeks for further legislative action. At the plenary on Thursday, the lawmakers had unanimously adopted a motion titled, quote, urgent need to evacuate grounded aircraft from Nigeria's airport, end of quote which was moved by members from Lagos State, the nation's economic capital, with arguable the biggest and busiest local and international airports. And moving on to the foreign scene, Adobe Chairman and CEO Shantanu Narayan on Thursday expressed confidence about the company's future, stating that the software maker's weaker than expected forward guidance does not signal problems for its business. Narayan's comment on mad money came shortly after Adobe shares uh, tumbled 10.2% on Thursday's session as investors responded negatively to the company's financial projections for its fiscal 2022 first quarter and the full year. Narayan noted that the underlying business is still as healthy as it has been referring to the 2022 targets. And that's it from the business desk. A very big thank you for watching. I am Omo Belanli Adishi. Bye for now. Thank you. Coming up next is sports news.
Premier League clubs will meet on Monday to discuss the escalating crisis around the coronavirus pandemic. With nine games postponed over the past week, including five already from this weekend's 10-match fixture list, clubs won the chance to discuss the options. Brentford coach Thomas Frank led calls for all matches to be called off until 26 December to enable a reset. Some feel the break should be longer, but others, such as Liverpool's jogging club, do not believe it should happen. The Premier League said on Thursday it intends to carry on playing matches as long as it is safe to do so. The meeting itself will not be purely centered around matches being called off and whether there is a break or not. There are also issues around rearranging the games that have already been postponed. And still talking sports update, Mohamed Ben Sulayman has been elected as the FIA's new president, becoming the most powerful person in world motorsports. Ben Sulayem won Friday's vote of the FIA General Assembly against Britain's Graham Stoker with 61.6% of the vote and becomes the first non-European president of motorsports world governing body. It takes over from Jean Todd, who was at the M for 12 years and served the maximum of three terms in the row. Among his election promise for the four-year term, Ben Sulayem has vowed to double motorsports participation, put the best practice governance structures in place, and strengthen diversity and inclusion. Although the FIA represents many forms of world motorsport and mobility groups, Formula One is its showpiece championship, and Ben Sulaiman takes over five days after the hugely controversial conclusion to the 2021 season. And that's it on Sports Updates. I'm Samson Oleide. Thank you, Samson. Coming up next is entertainment news. Hello and welcome to entertainment news. I am Michelle Abanum. Sex and the City actor Chris North denied sexual assault accusations laid against him in a Hollywood Reporter story on Thursday. He said his encounters with the women were consensual. North issued his statement in response to the Hollywood Reporter story in which two women using pseudonyms described sexual incidents with him in Los Angeles and New York in 2004 and 2015. In his words, the accusation against me made by individuals I met years, even decades ago, are categorically false. These stories could have been from 30 years ago or 30 days ago. No always means no. That is a line I did not cross. The encounters were consensual. It's difficult not to question the timing of the stories coming out. I don't know for certain where they are surfacing now, but I do know this. I did not assault these women, he added. Both women told the Hollywood Reporter that not return to the Sex and the City franchise had triggered memories of their experiences with him years ago. North played the romantic partner Mr. Big on Big in the HBO television series and its new sequel, and just like that. Police investigating the fatal shooting on the set of the Alec Baldwin film Rest have obtained a search warrant for the actor's phone. Cinematographer Helena Hutchins died and director Joel Souza was injured in October when Mr. Baldwin was rehearsing drawing a prop gun. The warrant was issued by a Santa Fe court in New Mexico, the state where Rust was being filmed. It says there may be evidence on the phone that could be material and relevant to this investigation. Investigators asked to confiscate Mr. Baldwin's Apple iPhone that is believed to be in his possession. The actor said he is fully cooperating with the police investigation into the shooting. No criminal charges have been brought against anyone. And that's it on Entertainment News. I am Michelle Abanum. And that's a wrap on news now at this hour. For more news stories, please visit our website, follow all our social media platforms, like and subscribe. And also don't forget to tune in to Star Time Channel 143 for more news updates. My name is Margaret Opera. Thanks for watching.